Hello, today we're going to talk about resultant forces. Now, resultant forces are essentially a single force which is the same effect as all of the original forces acting on, on, an, on an object all together. So if we're talking about this ball here, then a resultant force would be a single force arrow that has the same effect as these two forces acting on the ball at the same time. Now, to determine the, the, the resultant force, it's important to remember that whenever two forces are, are labelled on as acting in opposite directions, then one of these forces can be considered, uh, one of these two directions will be considered a negative direction and the other one a positive direction. So even if they ha both had the same uh, magnitude of force, say 10 newtons, in one way that would be a positive 10 newtons and in the other direction it would be minus 10 newtons. So when you add those two together you have minus 10 plus 10 and those two added together will get you zero. So in this particular case there will be a resultant force of zero. So it's important to remember if you have forces acting in opposite directions then one of them is negative the other one is positive and then you add them together to find the resultant force. Now there's a particular type of diagram that physicists use a lot to, uh, to help us visualize the forces acting on an object and that's called a free body diagram. Now in a free body diagram, rather than drawing the whole complexity of an object like this, this running person here, um, you simply draw a dot at the center of mass of that object to represent the object itself. So I wouldn't really be drawing this running man in the first place, I would just draw my dot. And then coming away from that dot, I would draw on an arrow to represent each of the forces acting on that body, on that object. Each of those forces will be pointing in the same direction that, that the force acts and the length of that arrow will represent its magnitude, how strong a force it is. The stronger the force, the longer the arrow. So in this instance here, um, we might have forces like air resistance acting, uh, acting in the opposite direction that the man is running. Uh, we might have thrust, which in this case is the produced by the, the pushing of the feet against the floor. Um, you might have weight acting downwards. And obviously as he's standing on a surface, I suppose I should draw in that surface. As our running man is standing on a surface, then you would also have an equal and opposite reaction force. Now I think you can already see why we don't bother to draw the whole object. It's complicated, there's lots of detail, and it does tend to get in the way of just considering what's happening to the object in terms of the forces acting on it. So generally speaking, a free body diagram would look something like this, with a dot in the center, and then a series of arrows drawn from the dot to represent the different forces that are acting on that object, um, and drawn to scale. So the longer the arrow, the larger the force. And that's resultant forces in free body diagrams. I'm just going to briefly show you a couple of examples of finding the resultant force in one dimension. So, for instance, if we had, let's draw a few of our objects. I'm going to do four objects here. Okay, so those are my four objects. And out of those four, we're going to have a number of different forces acting on them. So in this case, we're going to have two Newton force acting that way, and a two Newton force acting that way. This one, we're going to have two Newtons acting that way, and one Newton acting that way. Then five Newtons here, two Newtons there. Not the best scale drawing I've ever done. And for the final one, let's have two Newtons downward, five Newtons forward, and three Newtons backwards. So for this first one, the thing to remember is obviously one of these two is negative. I'm going to take the left-hand side, but it's essentially arbitrary as long as you stick with it for the entire question. So if that's minus two, then that will be minus one, that will be minus two, and that will be minus three. 
So then we add up our answer. So minus 2 plus 2 makes a resultant force of 0 newtons. So there's no resultant force for this first one. The second one, minus 1 plus 2, well that leaves us with a resultant force of 1. So I need to draw that in. So we have a resultant force here of 1 newton. Then the next one, minus 2 plus 5 makes 3. So we'd have a resultant force here of 3 newtons. And in this last instance, we have these two forces acting across here, minus 3 and 5, which is going to make give us a, a resultant force on their own of 2 newtons going this way. But we also have a force down here of 2 newtons going down. So there's the resultant force of just this dimension here. That's the 2 newtons. But really, we would have to resolve the force, this force, and the rest of our resultant force into one. Sorry, not resolve, combine into one. Now, the next video, I'm going to talk about how you can find the resultant force when you have forces acting in different directions like this. But for now, it was enough to just recap how to do that in one dimension. I hope this has helped. Goodbye.